What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one will break down what's going on with Spy, Tesla, the QQQ, and many tickers out there. I'm going to talk about what the news is saying about the markets and what's coming on involving Janet Yellen and why on earth we're going to see a very interesting day with lots of Fed speakers for tomorrow. Before I break anything down, give you guys any predictions about what the market is going to likely do, in my opinion, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon. Don't forget to check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, so looking at the market, SPY was down 0.25% for the day, holding up kind of decently. It wasn't like that crazy of a drop, but there was a big fake out that happened on Friday. So you got this really nice pump towards the 442. It's got a nice rejection off that. The market came down in a fake out, and we closed just a little bit in the red, down about 0.25%. But the market is holding above the 200 EMA, so there is still some potential for it to try to hold up. But the real question that comes to mind is, what's going to happen at this point? How is the market going to move? And it's going to be heavily dictated by lots of big catalysts coming out for the week. So before I give you guys my predictions, let's talk about all these catalysts. Jan Yellen has been in Beijing, China, and she said some very positive things about it. She mentioned that the Chinese economy has lots of obstacles with the USA. Uh, there have been tensions, but they're working on improving the current outcomes and they're trying to grow despite it. They also mentioned that there's a lot of challenges they face together, but they're still very open minded. They're still shaking hands and they're still trying to improve in a way to benefit both parties. That's what she said. She said lots of progress has been made. This is some very bullish news for many Chinese tickers out there as the diplomacy has improved on paper to some degree. Now, am I saying things are perfect? Am I saying things have like improved so much to the point where we're, we're friends? No, not necessarily. But overall, compared to before Janet Yellen went there, the policies right now are showing some promising changes, at least according to like regulations and uh, on papers. So that is a slight improvement, and this could be good for many Chinese tickers. However, there's more news coming out from more other tickers out there, and that's because of the Fed again. We have lots of Fed speakers coming out for Monday at about 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. We have the Fed bar. He's going to be giving a speech. Then Dali is going to be giving a speech at 11 o'clock a.m. Mester is going to be giving another speech at 11 a.m. as well with consumer inflationary expectations coming out, which could affect the market to some degree. When these Fed speakers speak, they tend to slow down the markets if they're going to be hawkish. So be very careful during the first three hours. Then at around noon Eastern time, we have Bostic from the Fed giving a speech. Now, this guy has had big effects on the markets, and he's very unpredictable. There were many times where he was being very hawkish and caused the market to drop a couple of weeks ago. But then, then the last time he spoke, which was about a week and a half ago, he was being more dovish, and he caused the market to actually pop. So it, it's very, very unpredictable what this guy is going to say this time. But here's the thing. He said he thought the Fed was done with raising rates. That's why the market ended up popping the last time he spoke and there's a chance he may say it again if he says it again be on the lookout however here's the thing you have to remember that lots of data dropped last week about the job sector which was still showing some strength especially in the private sector he might change his view because of that i just don't really know for sure so we'll have to wait and see what he says so just be open-minded to this what he says will affect the markets at noon tomorrow eastern time I'm going to break down the predictions despite that in just a couple of minutes. Let's now talk about this. WD40 is going to be announcing earnings tomorrow. That's about it. Nothing else is that big. We have Saratoga Investment Corp as well. Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be very, very boring. Not ma major earnings coming out for those days. But for Thursday, we have Delta. We have Progressive. We have a couple of others, which are a little bit big. Then for Friday, we have the big earnings coming out for banks. So we have JP Morgan. We have Citi. We have Wells Fargo. And the earnings season is about to kick off. So you have to be ready for all of this. This is going to be very impactful for the markets. All right. So anyways, now let's talk about the charts. What's very important? Well, I'm going to talk about the bull and bear cases and then what I predict is going to happen. If you're bearish, you want to see this thing break below the 200 EMA. If that happens, SPY is going to come down to the 436 zone, which is where we have lots of chop. If that fails, let's watch 435. This is support right over here at 435. And if that fails us, the next support is going to be around 433 to 434. Then 431, which is where we have this imbalance down here. If you're bullish, you want to see this thing hold above the 50 EMA, just like how it tried to do so on Friday, but it failed anyways. If it holds above the 200, 
uh, I'm sorry, the 200 and the 50, both of them simultaneously, we could see this thing try to make its way, way above 440, then 442 is going to be the next resistance zone. Break that, there's this unfilled gap at 442.8 like around there, and above that, it's going to come all the way up to about 444. If it manages to break that, it's going to try to make a new high, but I'm not really counting on that because the chart's looking a little bit weaker than before. I say that because we're starting to make lower highs as time goes on. If you just look at like this trend right here, we made a lower high here being stuck in this range for breaking down, balancing back up, and then, you know, we ended up rejecting from there. So it looks a little bit more bearish than bullish, especially on the bigger time frames. The four hour time frame is looking quite bearish on SPY. There's no you know, true sign of this thing trying to break out. And it ended up failing to hold above the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. On the daily chart, it's also looking a little bit weaker. If you look at the current trend, we got this nice rejection candle right here on SPY. It's looking a lot weaker on the daily chart. So the odds favor downside for this. Now, what I predict is going to happen though is we might get a pop during the pre-market. That's what tends to happen when we drop like this on Fridays. Pop and retest 440, maybe reject off of it. And we're going to be testing this 200 EMA. That's going to be your confirmation of downside. Okay, so watch all these levels for confirmation just to be safe. What am I predicting? I think we're going to pop. Retest 440, reject off 440, and come down to 438. Then we're going to be chopping around here for some time. The Fed's going to cause more volatility, but eventually I think we're going to sell off again and retest 436 very, very soon. That's my prediction, and I think it's likely going to happen as soon as Monday slash Tuesday. Now, please note, I'm not a fortune teller. I can't predict every single catalyst because we have so many Fed speakers. I don't know what they're going to say, but I'll do my best to just tell you what's very likely looking at the current trend. And don't forget, SPY has a tendency of popping near the opens and then cooling off later on. It's likely going to happen again for tomorrow. That's what I'm seeing for it. For Tesla, it's the same thing. This thing is looking weaker on the one hour time frame. It's continuing to make lower highs. Uh, the high was at 284, then 283, then 280 flat. It's slowly starting to downtrend. Break below 270, and Tesla's going to likely fill the majority of this gap, if not all of it, and see 265 to 262. Now, do I think it's going to happen? Well, I think it's going to test 270 very soon. But if you're bullish, you want to see this thing hold above 280, which I think is less likely. What do I think Tesla's going to do for tomorrow? I think it's going to pop in the open because Tesla does this more than spy. It pops in the open nicely, then cools off. Every morning for the entire week, it did this. It popped and came right back down. I think it's going to do the same thing. It's going to pop. Maybe retest either 278 or maybe 280, one of those two, probably 278, reject off 278 and start downtrending back down to 274, all the way down to 272, 270 possibly, and likely try to balance and close very flat. I'm leaning more in that direction of a very flat close for Monday, but then more downside later on possibly to see the 260s. I think that's going to happen to Tesla. For this week, it's going to rebound by next week, approaching earnings, and then earnings will determine if Tesla tries to continue to pump or if Tesla is going to crash. Basically, that's going to determine everything. So that's what I'm seeing for Tesla. For Apple, okay, if you're bullish on Apple, you're going to be watching these uh, very important levels. 192 is resistance, break above that. So we can see 193, then potentially 19, this 194 to 195 area right here. So like 194.5, then 196 after that if you're bullish. If you're bearish, watch it around 190. If that fails us, it's going to come down to 189.21, 188.47, then 187.5. What do I think is likely going to happen? It's getting very tight. I think it's going to try to pop in the morning, retest 191.5, then reject off of it and make its way down to 190. I think the odds favor downside in the one hour. On the daily, it's starting to look a little weaker on the MACD. On the four-hour time frame, I think the same thing is going on. The trend is looking a little bit more bearish. If you look at the MACD, it's been making lower highs. So the odds favor a nice pop in the morning, then a cool off as time goes on. For the triple Q, what's going on with this one? Look at that four-hour candle, huge rejection on the QQQ. The four-hour time frame is looking bearish, and also the daily is looking more bearish too. There's no clear sign of this thing like bouncing nicely. I think the odds favor this thing retesting like 368 or so, maybe even 370, somewhere between there, then rejecting and slowly coming down to get closer to filling this gap entirely or where this gap support was around 364. I think it's very likely the QQQ is going to do that and it could come even lower for a very healthy pullback. But whether or not this thing bounces nicely is going to depend on earnings. So make sure you're ready for that. So I'm looking for a potential retest of 368 and a rejection. And your confirmation for more bearish would, would be a break below this 365 200 EMA right here. So that's going to be your confirmation. 
watch the 15 to 200 on the one hour time frame very carefully with the extended hours on. That's going to help you determine the direction of this thing. The current direction at the time I am recording this, okay, it's looking more bearish on the four hour and the daily and etc. Just looking at this big rejection. I'm looking in my opinion for, so I went over the bull and bear cases by breaking down the levels, by the way. So if it breaks 368, watch 370, 372 to 372.5 for that inverse head and shoulders position. It's going to be the next resistance, then like uh, 374. Uh, and then, you know, the supports, I just talked about them, right? Below 366 comes 364, 363.5, then 360 after that. But what do I think is very likely? I'm looking for a potential bounce, okay? I think it's going to try to bounce a little bit. This is the most likely possibility. Retest 368 or so, maybe go a little higher. I don't know how high it's going to go. Then trade sideways, reject off that and trade sideways, come back down to 366. And eventually, it's going to likely downtrend and retest 364 either by the time we close on Monday or in the later days of the week as the trend is looking weaker. I think it's most likely going to pop then drop. That's my prediction for the QQQ. NVIDIA, I mean, we have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure on the bigger time frames, like on the four hour, you could see it. There's a good chance it's going to try to pop because of the Janet Yellen news. So I'm leaning a, kind of in the middle with it, but a little bit more bullish. Uh, I think if it can break above 433, we're going to see this thing push up for about 440. If it breaks below 423, watch it come down to 421, 418, 413.5, then 411 and 409 and, and beyond that. What do I think is more likely? Maybe a pop near open with the market to retest 432. It may try to go a little higher thanks to the Janet Yellen news to retest like 435, but because the market may slow down, it might not pop all the way up to 440 immediately. It could make an attempt to do so, but I don't know if it's going to go that high. Then it may cool off after that. And we might see this thing just close very, very flat. That's what I think is very likely for NVIDIA looking at the current trend, which is very sideways. If you look at it, it's very, very sideways, not really doing anything. That's what I think is more likely. For Microsoft, if you're bullish, you want to see this thing break above 340 and hold above it. If it does so, watch 343. If it breaks below the 200 DMA, you're going to be watching support all the way down to this like 334 area. If that fails us, there's 332, then 330. It's been very sideways, not really doing much. I predict it's going to get a bounce and try to push up for about 340. And then it might reject off that uh, and then just trade sideways from there. That's all I'm seeing from Microsoft. There's not really a clear direction. But the one hour was looking a little bit more bearish. The four hour is very sideways from what I remember, not really giving us a direction. Daily is looking a little bit weaker. There's a bearish divergence that is developing, but there's no clear sign of it playing out just yet. So we might see a rejection soon. I think I am leaning a little bit more bearish on it. I think there's a good chance it's going to just trade sideways and eventually break down and make its way down to like 3.30 or so. But just to be safe, I, I'm not really going to make that call until we get confirmation and for now, at the time I'm recording this, it looks more like it's just going to trade sideways and not really do much between these support and resistance levels, between 343 and then 337. I think that's more likely, and I think the odds favor maybe in the medium term, a slight rejection. We'll have to wait and see. I know we have earnings in just a couple of weeks. AMD has a lot of potential as well. We have this imbalance all the way up here that was unfilled at this like 116 area. And also there's another imbalance up here at like 118. I think the odds favor upside for AMD. I think it's going to likely cool off a little bit and try pushing. And it's going to eventually make its way up to 118 over the next couple of trading days, maybe for the next week or so, thanks to Janet Yellen and the news that came out. If you're bearish, though, you're going to be watching support around this like 109 area as major support. There's also support around this 113, 111 zone right there. If that fails us, watch 109, 107, and then 105. But I mean, I'm actually leaning a little bit more bullish on it. This overall trend is looking like a cup and handle that formed. I'm going to be watching this imbalance. If it breaks above 115.6, it could make its way up to 118. Netflix is looking pretty sideways, not really doing a whole ton so far on the bigger time frames. It's just been going back and forth between 430 and 446, back and forth and back and forth. However, I think that if it can hold above 440, we're going to see an attempt to fill this gap up to about 445. If it fails to hold 440, it could reject off all the way down to 432. That's going to be the next major support for it. There's not a whole lot of support holding this thing up. Now, which direction am I leaning in? I think it's very sideways. So I think it's just going to continue to trade sideways, maybe pop and try to fill this gap at 445, then reject and just remain sideways for the time being. But 
be warned that there is a possible head and shoulders developing. So even if it is looking sideways, it might end up cooling off all the way down to the 420s very soon because of this head and shoulders. It's all a possibility, but that's going to be more for the medium term. For the short term, we may get a very sideways day for tomorrow, maybe a pop near open, then a drop after that. And once again, sideways price action. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the NASDAQ and SPX for tomorrow. There's not really a whole lot going on with them that's different from what, what I said over the last couple of days. I already talked about them, by the way. Dollar is pretty flat, not really doing much. Uh, Coinbase, this is forming a bearish divergence. So there's a chance it could reject, but there's no confirmation just yet. Now, what I think is there's a chance it might try to pop a little bit higher since it's making higher highs and higher lows, and then it could reject later on. So I'm going to be watching, could we break one? Uh, I'm sorry, 81.18. If, if it does that, watch one, uh, watch, excuse me, 82.5. I apologize for that, guys. 82.5, if it breaks that, then we could get closer to 85 before rejecting. If it ends up rejecting, watch 77 as support. If that fails us, watch 75, 74.5, then all the way down to about 71.8. What do I think this thing is going to do? Well, there's a bearish divergence forming on it. If we break below the 50 EMA, but below 77, that's going to be a bearish confirmation. If it holds above 80, then it has potential to push up to 82.5. That's just my view of it. It's kind of in the middle for the time being. I think it's going to try to pop for 80, and it's going to make an attempt to break a little higher. Maybe it gets to like 82 or so, then rejects off that and starts downtrending a bit and retests 77. For Baba, this is probably going to be more bullish after the buyback news and very, very good news over the weekend. There's no clear sign of this thing like dying again. There's a possible cup and handle. So I'm going to be watching. Could this thing get to 94.8? I think the odds favor that. If it breaks down, watch 90, 88, 86.68, 85.7 as support. And if it breaks below 85, it's going to fill this gap down to the 83s. What do I think is more likely? Well, I went over the bull and bear cases. I think the bullish case is going to likely play out. It's going to try to accumulate and make its way up to almost 95 or 94.88 to be precise. I think the odds favor that, so watch it very carefully. For Google, it looks pretty sideways, not really doing much, but there's a possible head and shoulders forming. If it rejects off 119, watch 116.9 to 117. If this thing manages to break above 121, it could go for this gap fill if the opposite happens. What do I think is going to happen? I think Google's going to try to hit 121. I don't know if it's going to come up to fill this gap. I mean, if it breaks and holds to 200, it could try to fill the gap up to like 123. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to form this head and shoulders and then start cooling off a bit as tech tends to cool off during the July period. This chart looks very sideways to me and potentially bearish over time, looking at the possible head and shoulders. All right, that's what I'm seeing for Google. It looks very sideways for now, so I think it's going to pop tomorrow morning, retest 121, reject, reject off that, and just trade sideways very close to like 120. And I think later on, it may reject and cool off. Uh, it may drop lower. Uh, for Amazon, it's very sideways, not really doing anything. There's no sign of a direction. It's been like this for weeks, so there's a good chance it's just going to be stuck between 127 and about 131. Now, the thing about Amazon is if it breaks below 127, there is this imbalance all the way down here around these lower levels, very close to this 125 area. So I think there's a good chance Amazon is going to eventually come down there and it could be forming like a head and shoulders, but it may need some more time by the time it breaks below 127 to get down to 125. I am leaning more bearish on it if that ends up being the case, but we have to wait and see if we end up doing that. There's also a bearish divergence that forms. So I think Amazon's just going to trade sideways for some time and eventually break down to 125. That's my view on Amazon. So very sideways price action between support and resistance, 131 to like 127. Then it eventually breaks down to 125 later on. Now for Meta, this is very mixed. Uh, got a nice rejection off 300. We're going to be watching how this thing moves. If it breaks below 290, it's going to start sinking down to about 287 or so to this imbalance. I think it's looking a little bit weaker for that. Uh, if it tries to break above 295, it could be pushing up for 300. What am I leaning towards? I think Meta is going to pop, retest 295, reject off that, come down to 291, then 290. If that fails us, it's going to come all the way down to like 287. So I'm leaning in the direction of it testing 287 very soon, looking at the current trend the rejection on the one hour. The daily is showing something very similar. It's looking a little bit weaker, but not that bad. Four hours also looking weaker. So I'm going to be watching 287 on Meta, then potentially 285. It looks more bearish from a technical standpoint. All right, guys. So that's what I have for this video. I hope you guys found value in this. Thank you all so much for listening. The market's likely going to be very sideways for some time. And then we have Fed speakers, a lot of them coming out for tomorrow. But for a lot of tickers, especially on the tech side, I'm seeing some signals of some downside for like Meta, maybe, maybe Amazon eventually, maybe Tesla too. So I just wanted to note that. Do what you have to do. 
do what you need to do by watching for confirmation as well. Um, always be open-minded to both possibilities, but just know I'm leaning a little bit more bearish on lots of these tech stocks looking at the current trends. Okay, thank you for listening. Have a good one. The market to the moon is long-term is very bright. Enjoy your Sunday, everyone, and peace out.